Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special post news update. I am John Pollock with the near vacationing waiting who thought, you know what? A couple hours before I get onto a flight, why don't I come over and do a quick update with John? You know, I just, I told you I couldn't stay away. Come on. There's so much news. I had to just get it out of my system. I got a knock at my door <laughs> and I opened it and all of a sudden, Dude, did you see the dynamite demos? <laughs> 0.75 in men, 18 to 49. As I usually do on a Friday. Yeah, this was, this was a great surprise. Uh, yeah. way showing up, doing some, uh, some post office work. Yeah, yeah, just trying to, you know, set up some stuff. Um, you know, just try to, you know, get you going before I get out of here. So, uh, it's a work in progress. Anything with me and technology is a work in progress. So now you get to see my, my lair here and what I, what I work with. You know, I've, I'm making up for lost time trying to be, uh, you know, it's been a year and a half since I've been here. So yeah. Yeah. yeah way said under his breath. Nice of you to really, uh, keep everything up to par while I've been away this last year and a half. Cause you've let this stuff you, go to shit. No, you, it looks exactly the same. You've done a good job. I've done nothing. Uh, it's all way here, but we have, uh, several news items to get into a quick note off the top tonight. I will be back with you, joined by Nate Milton, 1115 Eastern for all members of the Post Wrestling Cafe. We'll be live chatting Smackdown, chatting Rampage, and we are going to be taking your phone calls. So I look forward to that. Way is going to be getting on an airplane uh, in the wee hours of Saturday morning. So Way, Mm -hmm. get some rest. Are you going to sleep? Uh, Probably not. I'll probably sleep on the plane. Okay. As usual for me. Well, that's good. How long of a flight? I think like four hours. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, AEW because they had, of course, a huge week coming out of All Out. Tony Khan was on Busted Open Radio on Friday stating they don't have the official number yet because obviously still calculating buys and such. But Tony Khan stated that they topped 200,000 buys head and shoulders above their previous record, which if you're going by uh, WrestleNomics uh, reporting was 135 for Revolution and this was a significant increase on that. And the first non WWE pay-per-view to top 200,000 buys since mayhem here in Toronto, an event Ah, that I was at. Okay. Wow. Which I don't take any credit for the buys. No, no. Um, yeah, I think to be expected, you know, I felt like this was sort of in the ballpark. I mean, considerably more buzz than some of their prior show shows. I mean, just, you know, I guess the question is, do you attribute this mainly to CM Punk or do you attribute it also to some of the rumors? What do you think? I put a lot of this with Punk. Like, I think the Danielson thing, it was, there was certainly the buzz and you had seen the reports, but I still felt like that was kind of the cherry on top. I'm not saying it, it didn't play a factor, but I put a lot of this on the shoulders of a Punk, his first match back, and just how tremendous that debut was that circulated so much. And again, another indication of, we looked at that Friday night number for Rampage, and it was down from the week prior. And sometimes that has been the case where you see a bit. This this happened to WrestleMania sometimes, where that go home show was a little disappointing. This is when they were in the pay per view era, but I mean that was not an indication that uh, interest was at all diminished for this show. It was at an all time high. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think the countdown might have played anything into it? I think so. That, uh, it was a great slot to be placed in. It was ninth for the night on cable, and it was a very good show, very compelling show. So I think I, I'm certain that that maybe contributed to some last minute buys. I guess the next question is, do they beat this at full gear? Well, my question was for you, what is the main event of full gear if you want to challenge this number? I, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I, I think it's possible. I think it's very possible. I think, it, I think so, too. You're only it, building it, momentum off of this show. Now, it is a Saturday. It's The November show has typically been the toughest one for mm-hmm. AEW to do. Yeah. But all the factors in the world, I think if you have something hot, football season doesn't matter. A UFC card on ESPN doesn't matter. Like, I I do believe they can still do a very strong number. Th- this is a very high mark to be able to achieve. And I think you're, you're focused – Brian and – Punk are going to be your your one two that you're looking at as you know the key drivers for that show. It's going to be a show where you'll have, I mean, presumably Kenny versus Brian, which I think is is probably a bigger main event in my opinion than any singular match. I mean, Punk returning is big in and of itself, but like Punk, sorry, Brian versus Kenny is, 
I think just as big, in my opinion, for a pay-per-view main event. Um, you're also going to have presumably punk wrestling on the show. You're going to have an Adam Cole, possibly an elite versus, you know, whatever's going on, uh, with, with, uh, Christian and, and, and all those guys. So, uh, I, I think it stands a great chance of doing better. Yeah. I think that they certainly, um, heightens you know, the bar for what to expect on an AEW pay-per-view. Uh, coming out of Wednesday, the show did 1,319,000 viewers, 0.52 in the demo. And for this week, by 3,000 viewers, Dynamite did edge out Raw in the 18 to 49 demo. Uh, among males, uh, Dynamite just killed on Wednesday night. Uh, a 0.75 in men, 18 to 49. Uh, you know, everything was up gigantic this week. Um, with the exception of plus 50, that was still up uh, 9%. Everything else, like big double-digit increases over the past week. The audience that still Raw has a, a command of is the female audience that they were able to top AEW in. But it was AEW winning several demos this week. They beat Raw in men 18 to 49. They beat them in adults 35 to 49. Um, it's a huge number for Dynamite. And it's one that... Some will look at and say, is this all just coming off the fumes of the pay-per-view, the buzz of Danielson and Cole? But they have a lot lined up these next few weeks that is it sustainable? That's an interesting question at a time when Raw is going to be starting to go against the NFL on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, much of the – like we love kind of like pitting perhaps a, a week's rating versus another week's rating. And I think it's a great attention-grabbing headline. But ultimately, what matters is the trajectory of all yep. of these numbers. And, um, I mean, as, you know, with, with the additions that AEW has, I, I definitely think they stand a chance to maintain that, that bump for at least a good amount of time. So, um, I, I think this is like going to be a new level for them. I think so too. Like this is one where I, I would push back on people looking at it as like a one week since July 7th, July 7th, they have been under they have not fallen under 975. Yeah. And only two of them have been uh, under a million. Like mm-hmm. a million is the mark that they are going to be consistently hitting and maybe by uh, a bit more. A 0.52 each week in the demo, I, I don't see them staying at, at that. If they are above a 0. 0.4, 0. 0.45, mm-hmm. that, that's a significant increase that they could, they could have. And if you have a lot of people sampling this, they are engaged and you've got several big shows. We've got Newark, Arthur Ashe Stadium. Rochester, I think, is going to turn into like a real sentimental show potentially. Mm-hmm. And then you've got Philadelphia, which is going to be their two year anniversary show. It's like every week they've got something. Um, but it's also, that's a lot of, it's a lot of juggling to do booking wise to create, uh, special event feels on a weekly basis. Um, it's it, it, like this is going to be the next major test of Tony Khan as, as a booker. Now you've got all of these pieces and it's figuring out all of this. Plus you've got Rampage. Plus you've got a pay-per-view in two months and you've got a peak for all these different things. Uh, it's a challenging act to, to pull off as you're trying to grow this. Well, one of the big issues I would say coming out of Wednesday was maybe some criticism about there being too much, certainly from us, maybe, um, you know, uh, from people who wanted to see more Moxie Suzuki. And I would suppose that's a good problem to have when you have a lot of big shows to, to fill and to peak. And Suzuki is coming back. Suzuki is coming back. Yeah. Um, and you know, he kind of has his pick of not just people on his own roster, but people outside of his roster that are available to him as well. You know, Tanahashi might be eventually coming in. So, um, I, I, I think, I think it's a question of, you know, making sure that they don't do too much at once and making sure that they have enough for everything. Yeah. It's, it's an embarrassment of riches of the, the options you have to play and new Japan just represents a whole other chapter mm-hmm. of new stuff that when you bring in a new Japan talent, like it means something to this audience as yeah. well. This is not like you're not playing to hardcores. Like the hardcores are just growing and growing and growing. And I mean, that to me was a really significant moment on Wednesday when Linda Pillman got the reaction she did. That was very telling mm-hmm. of an audience. That, totally. Who are we playing to? Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kenny and Will Osprey have been having their, little online rivalry. So uh, if there's the biggest stage where that match can possibly happen, I mean, at the moment it would be an AEW uh, stage, but uh, I'm sure there are many things to have to work out behind the scenes for something like that to go down. But uh, there are a lot of possibilities. 
So it was uh, a huge, huge number for AEW, their second highest ever in their history, just behind the, the, the debut episode from October 2nd of 2019. For tonight on Rampage, they've announced interviews with Brian Danielson and Adam Cole, pack against Andrade that has gotten rave reviews, mm-hmm. six woman tag with Britt Baker, Rebel, and Jamie Hayter against Ruby Soho, Riho, and Chris Statlander, Brian Pillman Jr. against Max Caster and Darby Allen and Sting. Responding to Tully Blanchard, they've also announced Minoru Suzuki and Lance Archer appearing next week to challenge John Moxley. And I guess that brings up the question. Do is, we get the whole song? Yeah, I think we get the whole song. I think they'll always. make you wait. But if, <laughs> if it sets up a tag, yeah. uh, could that be Eddie Kingston's role at Arthur Ashe Stadium? That's very interesting. Because I mean, that's the natural person you would assume unless uh, Moxley has – someone else to to go to like that seems to be the direction i think much of it comes down to whether or not tony wants to put that belt onto eddie kingston or if he wants to keep it on miro for you know another thing down the line but if he is going to make that title switch i just can't see a better place than arthur ash and the promo segment on wednesday certainly points you in that direction that was there for a reason so i still prefer the miro kingston match at Mm -hmm. arthur ash stadium but i mean you could do this tag match at at another one like we just listed off the amount of shows that you have you don't have to make that Though Suzuki getting his entrance at Arthur Ashe Stadium, that's quite a make good. Pretty great, yeah. So, but Suzuki is going to be addressing Moxley, so he won't be wrestling on Dynamite, presumably, right? No, they may. He next might, week he'll appear. He might wrestle on Rampage. Possible, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you've got that Arthur Ashe Stadium show to also do Rampage with, right? So there's you could have Kingston on both. Hmm. Okay. Different options. SmackDown has a loaded show tonight. We have the Usos against the Street Profits. Edge against Seth Rollins. Brock Lesnar appearing for the first time on TV since March of 2020. A contract signing between Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair. But what's most interesting is all the names that are advertised on the their events page that are not listed for anything on television yet. We have John Cena, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, and Charlotte Flair all advertised, as well as Sasha Banks, who hmm. has not been on TV since... August 13th. I could see Sasha returning on camera. It would make sense. This would be a big show to bring her back. So I I think we're going to have a really big smackdown on top of it uh, going into Extreme Rules. And they have announced Roman Reigns and Finn Balor for that show. Okay. Roman Reigns and Finn Balor. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big MSG show. It, it, I guess it remains to be seen whether or not, you know, a guy like Cena will make a surprise appearance. Um, I would advertise that if he was going to be showing up, but he's there. He, there's nothing stopping him from doing an appearance on the show. Do you think he at least shows up? At the show? Yeah. Oh, he'll be there for the live crowd. The but only question on is TV. if he's on SmackDown. Yeah. Well, why I, wouldn't they put him on SmackDown? I don't know. Just to even talk about MSG, you know, and like talk about being back in New York. Like, I think that'd be a great opening segment. I would, f- John Cena speaks, like put that out, like the, like what, what harm would that do? And I would, I would carve out 10 minutes for John Cena on the show, mm-hmm. but they do have a lot tonight. It's a, it's a pretty, uh, pretty loaded show. Impact. They have announced that Bound for Glory will take place on Saturday, October 23rd from Sam's Town Live in Las Vegas, but it's going to air at 10 PM Eastern time. Because that night is a Saturday night dynamite. So dynamite will air from 8 till 10 and the pay-per-view will air at 10 p.m. That is very accommodating. I mean, but it's also the wise move because I think um, they stand to lose a lot of the same viewers that they probably share. I mean, for those in Vegas, it's great. It's 7 o'clock local time. But for the pay-per-view audience, you're putting it in – like, is a wrestling audience going to – buy a pay-per-view in like the UFC slot, a Saturday night at 10. Um, that will be the question, but this was the right move. If you're running that day, running against Dynamite just seems, why? Why are you yeah. forcing that hand? And what AEW talent will be earmarked for Bound for Glory? Like mm-hmm. certainly you would assume Christian and probably not the only one. Yeah, yeah. And do we actually get any sort of co-promotion? I'm, I'm guessing not. I'm guessing it's about the same of, of what we had. I, I think we will see a, yeah, I, I don't know if we'll get the, uh, coming up next. Yeah, probably not. If ever there was one you really want to push for, um, Bound for Glory would probably be the one to do it. But mm-hmm. dude, we have, we have a crazy stretch coming up. Like looking at some of these weekends and weeks like that. Oh, dude, are you even including the G1? I'm, it, the G1 ends on October 21st, yeah. which is the same day WWE is expected to have that Saudi Arabia show. Okay. Which are both going to be early shows because of the time zones. 
And then two days, the next day is your SmackDown Rampage combo. And Saturday is this doubleheader of Dynamite, a Saturday Dynamite going into Impact's big pay-per-view of the year. That's just a three-day stretch. You know, um, I don't think there's enough wrestling. Enjoy this vacation. So. <laughs> That's going to be my advice. Enjoy enjoy the hell out of this vacation. Yeah, definitely will. Because you're coming back into the deep end. Um, before we wrap up here, let's look if we... Uh, if anything else uh, to, to look forward to. Um, this is the last story. Right after Wednesday and the segment with MJF and the Pillman family, yeah. Brittany Pillman ends up going into contractions as she was and expected to have the baby. I don't know if she has officially had the baby yet, um, but this is crazy. It's nuts. What a great story for that baby when they're born, you know. This was the... <laughs> And and what a great get for MJ, MJF to be able to claim that he he already has taken credit for um, yes saying making making the baby want to leave the family like or leave her his mother or whatever something like that quite the uh, this is, this is going to be a segment that is going to be well remembered because of a story like this yes yes anyway those are some of the uh, news and notes that are going on around the industry I will have a uh, news update going up on the site later today looking further at this dynamite number from Wednesday and. And the, the weeks ahead as Monday Night Football comes back. Way, thank you as always. Enjoy your vacation, your time off. Thank you very much. Uh, I will be listening from uh, my place of vacay. And uh, don't forget the Nubian Wrestling Advocates also. On yes, Sunday. yes. The Nubian Wrestling Advocates will be dropping by Sunday. And a new edition of the British Wrestling Experience is up with Benno, Martin, and brand new permanent co-host Andy Ogden mm. joining the crew. What a great kid. So welcome, Andy, to the post-wrestling team permanently, and uh, hope to hear a lot more from you, especially, well, not uh, not up, up at the upcoming world transfer, world... Uh, Tra- world transfer window. Transfer window, yes, yes. Um, I don't believe Andy will be a part of that, but I will be a part of it, along with the returning Jamesy on September 30th, so I'm excited for that. Yeah, we were going to book the United Center for the transfer window. The first dance. I think we could have. Your yeah. James had come out. <laughs> I heard you. I heard your chance. Uh, looking forward to a one night only affair of, uh, only. of Jamesy. Always great to hear from him. Uh, so that is coming up later this month. All of your news and podcasts can be found at postwrestling.com. And I'm back tonight, 1115 Eastern with Nate. We're chatting SmackDown. We're chatting Rampage. And yes, folks, we're going to chat the late Michael K. Williams, a.k.a. Omar Little. All right. Speak right. with you tonight.